Hi there, welcome to the Schwoven's Nest. My name is Sandra, and I'm so glad you're here. For this DIY, I'm using this artist panel that you can get at dollar stores. You can also get different sizes at craft stores and on Amazon. I'm just going to use some brown acrylic paint and I'm going to apply it like it was a stain. So I'm just going to put it all the way around the back and then I'm going to wrap it around the front and make it look like a framed picture. I did two panels with the brown and then two panels just with some white chalk paint. Now I'm going to use a glue stick and just apply the design that I printed off on white cardstock. I've got a few different designs here. I'm making four of these all together because they are going to be part of my collection at Finnegan's General Store. And I'll tell you more about their store in a few minutes. When you're using a glue stick, if you put enough on the back, it gives you a little bit of time that you can adjust your photo or your print or whatever you're putting inside. I'm just using my Cricut little squeegee scraper here to make sure that I have all of the edges and everything glued down really well. I will be giving this a coat of spray sealer when I'm done with the project just to make sure that nothing comes apart. Of course, I'm going to need to distress the white one because that makes it look more old and weathered and more farmhouse. So I'm just using a chip brush and just a little bit of black paint, not too much. I offloaded quite a bit of it and I just want to get a little bit of a color on here, not too heavy. Next for the signs, I need to drill a partial hole in the center of the bottom of them. So I'm just using my drill here and I'm just going to go in about a quarter of an inch and that is going to fit the dowel that I've created on the spindle. I cut some spindles down to about seven or eight inches and I'm going to drill a hole in the center of it because I'm going to need to fit the dowel in the hole which I'll be able to then attach to the picture. I grabbed some pieces of scrap wood to use as the base of the spindle and I'm going to start the screw and make sure that it goes in a little bit so I can easily find the hole and then I'll attach these two pieces together. I used my weld bond glue to glue the dowel into the spindle and let that set for a couple of hours before I moved on to this step. I'm also going to be using some of my weld bond glue to make sure that this stays in place. And I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue just to make it secure while the weld bond glue sets up. And these turned out so pretty. I made four of these all together and they're now being displayed at Finnegan's General Store and they are for sale there. These are some of my other items from previous videos as well. I did the window boxes and the trays in my last Timber Tuesday video. Stephanie and Michael purchased the General Store a couple of years ago and they've done an amazing job updating it. I am so happy to be working with both of them. Finnegan's General Store also has Greco Pizza Express, so when you need that pizza or sub fix, you definitely need to go try out their pizza. It is amazing. Lots of sweets at Stephanie's Good Candy Shop. They also rent DVDs and they are showcasing a bunch of other local artists as well. They've got wood signs and baskets and clothing and all sorts of wonderful items. You need to go check them out. And lastly, if you've never tried Kawartha Dairy ice cream, you are definitely missing out. Make sure you stop in at Finnegan's in Cloyne, Ontario. So where is Cloyne, Ontario? I've got a map here for you that shows the southern portion of Ontario. It is in between Ottawa and Toronto. So when you're coming from Toronto, you're driving about three hours northeast. And from Ottawa, you're going to be coming about two hours southwest. If you'd like to go camping, Bon Echo Provincial Park is minutes away from Cloyne, so you'll be able to go camping, enjoy Mazinaw Lake, and get out to Finnegan's to see what they have to offer. With spring and summer fast approaching, I thought it would be really nice to make a wreath that you could display all through the spring and summer season right into the fall. 
I've got some of these sunflowers. They're really big. I picked them up at Dollarama, but I think they were a clearance item from a different store because I've never seen any of them since, and they're such high quality blooms. I'm gonna remove the stems because I wanna just use that little knob that's left and just put some hot glue on it and wedge it right in between the grapevine branches. So this wreath did some evolving as I was working with it. I did put the third blossom down at the bottom there, but later on I'm going to be pulling that off and rejigging it. I'm going to be using some of these ficus leaves. I'm going to glue them in all around the blossoms and then going up the one side and then around the other side. I did also trim some of the ficus leaves down because a couple of them were actually quite a few of them were kind of sticking out in a funny way and I just didn't like the look of it. So when you're working with florals like this, don't be afraid to just move things around or trim different branches off and place them in a different area. You want to make sure that you love it. If you don't love it, you're not going to hang it. Once I was done adding the ficus leaves, I felt that it was too flat. Ficus leaves aren't my very favorite to work with, but I had already put them on there, so I just decided to keep going. I'm going to add some of these other little greeneries that are really more textured and they have a little bit of white on their tips, and I think that made a huge difference. Then, once I had those first couple of stems stuck in, I didn't like that they were so bulky. So I removed the individual stems and I'm just going to hot glue them in places all the way around. And that just gives it more of a delicate texture. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I'm so glad you stopped by. If you like what you see, I would love it if you could hit that red subscribe button and stick around a while. It really helps support the growth of my channel and I truly appreciate it. Thank you to all of my current viewers and subscribers. I love you guys and I really appreciate each and every one of you too. Now I'm going to show you how I made the little bee that was on the wreath. I'm using just some air dry clay and I picked this up at Dollarama, which is a local dollar store. It was $4 for a big chunk and it works really, really well. So what I'm doing now is just creating sort of an egg shape to create the body. Then I'm going to use another little bit of clay, make a little round head and then attach the two together. With this air dry clay, it's really good to have every everything connected together first and then let it dry all together. If you want to have a really more secure hold, you can definitely glue the pieces together, but you can also just use a little bit of water to hold them in place. I flattened it out just a little bit because he was kind of chunky and I'm going to be adding some wings so I need more of a flat surface to apply the wings. I took another smaller piece and made a circle shape and then I just squished it flat with my hands and then shaped it how I wanted it to be. Now I'm just going to trim off a little bit of it because I thought it was a little big, make it more of an oval shape and then add it onto the B. I'm going to repeat this process for the other wing and then I'm going to make two other smaller ones and have those layered on top of the original wings. I used my fingers just to flatten out the ridge that was attached to the body, blending those two pieces of clay together and that held it in place really well. I let my bead dry overnight and now I'm just using some of my paints and I'm going to paint the little head black. I'm going to give him some yellow stripes of course and then I'm going to paint the wings white. Just a quick note for you, just because this is what I found out, is if you paint the clay and then apply the glue, the glue only sticks to the paint and not the clay. So don't 
paint the part that you want to glue. I ended up having to pull him off because he was kind of hanging the next day and I removed all of the paint and then re-glued him. But he turned out pretty cute. For this last project, I'm taking this old liquor bottle that someone gave me a while ago, and I liked it because it had that red medallion on it, and it also had some engraved lettering on it, and I thought that would look really great when it was distressed. Now, I didn't spray this with my clear matte finish, and I should have because I ended up having to do about three coats of chalk paint to make sure that it all covered really well. So make sure when you're doing shiny projects you spray them with some matte clear finish or you can go over it with a layer of Mod Podge as well and that will just help you save some time and make the paint go on a lot smoother. Using some tissue paper I printed off this B design and I will have that available as a free printable for you and I'm just using the Mod Podge method of putting it on and making sure that it's nice and smooth. This is a smooth surface on the front where I'm putting this so I didn't have any problems but I did make a mistake. Let me know in the comments if you think you know what I did. I'm not going to tell you until later on. I'm going to do some distressing just using this chip brush that I have and some black paint, making sure that I offload as much of the paint as I can. I just wanted to do a light coat on this. At first, I just thought I would do this medallion and then the letters itself. Then I decided to do the whole bottle a little bit and I ended up going a little heavy handed with it. I could have gone over the, some of the darker areas with some white paint, but that just changes the look of the distressing and I didn't want to do that. So at some point this bottle will probably get another makeover, but for now I think it turned out pretty nice. I hope you enjoyed my projects today. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. That gets me noticed more on YouTube and it promotes my channel and helps me grow. Thank you so much to Stephanie and Michael at Finnegan's General Store for taking in some of my items to sell. I'm so excited to be working with them. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. That gets me noticed more on YouTube and helps my channel grow. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.